does the person you are with encourage you to read you have to ask what does he bring for me roses or books if someone has a stake in making you better that person will push you towards books books are what we all need My name is Grant Holly. I live in Virginia in the United States. Um I, it's a, it's an honor it's an honor to speak with you today and I, I I've watched many of your videos in the last few months. Welcome. Very good. It's very good. Um my question is uh Vedant is is from the hindu religion and i myself grew up in a different uh different faith different religion um how how can the teachings of vedant help help me in my life is my question no first of all please see that vedant is a philosophy and as far as the usually prevalent and practiced hindu religion is concerned it actually draws very little from vedant unfortunately so there is the philosophy and then there is the religion what we usually call as religion has a god has a messenger or a prophet has a holy book has a canon has a set of commandments no none of that applies to vedant vedant is simple darshan philosophy so in that sense it is universal how can a philosophy be exclusive to a religion it's almost like saying that because uh, nietzsche was a european and a german therefore indians cannot uh, take from him or because schopenhauer or or sartre uh, they were they were christians even even if not practicing christians therefore a hindu cannot learn from them philosophy is just exploration into the truth even religion must have a philosophical base the problem is that religions assume a baseless life of their own without being rooted in philosophy hmm? so philosophy is something that must give nourishment rather survival very survival to religion but religions usually don't take anything from philosophy if you if you look at the way most major religions of the world are practiced uh, you would uh, uh, be at loss to find any philosophical foundation a person is doing such and such things if you ask him why are you doing that thing he'll say oh because i am a i am a christian or a muslim or a buddhist or a hindu or, or something and uh, you say no all that is all right that's a part of your tradition or your religious identity but what really is the thought or understanding or philosophy beneath your action and and, and he'll have uh, usually no answer so so vedant is a philosophy and philosophy is for everybody right so marx had a philosophy one one did not say that uh, he was uh, born a jew therefore the others will not uh, look at that philosophy or that uh, he 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 lived uh, a religionless life therefore those who practice religion uh, cannot admire marx it it begins with i 
and it does not matter whether uh, I, I am an agnostic, an atheist, a Hindu, a Christian. How does it matter? Don't I say I if I am an atheist? <laughs> I am an atheist. Even that begins with I. Hmm? I hate Vedant. Even that begins with I. I am a Hindu. I am a Christian. That begins with I. Vedant explores that very I. So, so all that is okay. It does not have anything that one must believe in. Vedant is not a belief system at all. Vedant wants the truth, not imaginations, not beliefs. In fact, uh, you'd be curiously happy to know that God as such has no place in Vedant. Even if you want to say there is God in Vedant, you will simply have to say uh, that which is the truth has to be called as God. Hmm? So Vedant says there is me, there is the world. And I find that I keep getting deceived and wounded so frequently. And I have a proof. My inner situation is the proof that there is something wrong with my existence and my relationship with the world. So I want to understand who I am, what this world is all about and what is the relationship between two of us and how can I get rid of my suffering. That's Vedant. What does that have to do with any kind of theology? It is not a belief system. It does not say you have to follow these rules or commandments. It does not say that you have to celebrate these festivals. It does not say you have to marry like that or you have to be cremated like that. There is nothing of that kind here. People often come and say, you know, does Vedant allow this? Well, Vedant does not allow anything. It does not disallow anything. All it says is look into yourself. Now, look into yourself is valid for the man, for the woman, for the white, for the black, for the young, for the elderly, for the Indian, for the American, for the Chinese, for the African. Because we all exist as human beings, right? Vedanta is saying you are a human being and you are not well. Can you please inquire into why you are not well? Vedanta does not say you have, to, you have to keep a beard or you have to shave your head or you have to treat women this way. No, none of that. You decide these things on your own. Vedant has absolutely nothing at all to say on these matters. Do I go to a church? Do I go to a temple? Do I not go to any place at all? Should I have kids? Should I marry? Vedant has no advice to offer on these things. It addresses only the core question of existence. Who am I? And why am I the way I am? And how do I get rid of my miserable state? Simple. What do I wear? When do I fast? How do I celebrate my festivals? Hmm? Not interested. I, I do have uh, one more question. Uh, I, I'm a referee of of sports, uh, an umpire. Um, how not focusing on w winning the game, the the making of the goals, will help a player to play his best? Because according to the Gita. Don't you focus your attention on the results and not focus your attention on the actions to get to that goal, get to that result? What the Gita is saying is, do not focus on what the result has for you. You can focus on the result, but the Gita advises you to not focus on what the result has for you. These are two very different things. The Gita is usually misinterpreted. The Gita says desireless action and all desires are for oneself, right? I desire for myself. 
So what the Gita is saying is, yes, you can look at the score line. And looking at the score line, you can decide your next move. Be it tennis or soccer or whatever. But you need not think about what the result would do to you. Obviously, in tennis, if I am two sets behind, I have to calibrate my strategy accordingly. Right? If, if I have already faulted on the first serve, I cannot forget that. The second serve has to be different from the first serve. So, I can think of the result. But I need not think of what would happen to me in case of a particular result. So, what the Gita is saying is, you should be so strong within that the result should have no impact on you. That's very different from saying, do not think of the result. You can think of the result and then you say, whatever the result is, I don't mind. I'm able to take everything. But yes, I am striving for a win, definitely. But irrespective of whether I win or lose, something within me will remain untouched and unmoved. That's the message of the Gita. Hmm? Go fight, fight as hard as you must. If you are playing, play to win. If you are playing, play to win. But the core of your existence must not be touched by the win. And if the core of your existence remains untouched by the win, it will also remain untouched by the defeat. Give everything that you have to the game. Obviously, you must want to win. But just the center, just the center. That one little untouchable point must be there. And if that is there, you will never be afraid. Are you getting it? It's not that you must not focus on the result. Do not focus on what the result will do to you. Yes, I want to win. Yes, yes. The game must be won. But that will not make me a winner. I will remain who I am. I am already a winner in some sense. Irrespective of the result of the game, I am already a winner. Yet I am fighting to win the game. I am fighting to win the game. I am not fighting to be a winner. The winner I already am. That's the Gita. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Most welcome. Mm.